Now this is truly a rare sight, a high wing airliner, something you don't see around a lot, especially nowadays since this plane, the Avro, isn't really flying around anymore. Some other high wing airliners, maybe the Q400 or the AETR. But other than that, I can't really think of one. And you may wonder why. I mean, look, there are lots of benefits to having your wing strapped on your roof than on your be belly. Perhaps it's the very easy boarding. You can just open the stairs since the plane can be so much lower lower. Look how low it is to the ground because the engines are mounted up way high. Compare that to the stance of a 737 MAX. Because of the big engines, it has to really it's kind of like a monster truck, really. Passenger comfort is kind of cool. I mean, look outside of the window where you can see what is beneath you at all times, no matter where you are in the cabin. Also look at the cool engines on the side. So everybody, I decided to see what if a long range big airliner was turned into a high wing plane. And for that, I chose the Boeing 757. And I really found out why it really isn't a good idea. And well, here it is. I'm sorry if I caused any nightmares here. Um, so what I did here was probably just place the wing on top of the fuselage here. And one big problem is that the structural capabilities in the roof obviously need to be strengthened, which is why we have this huge thing here. It looks ridiculous. It is pretty stupid looking, but it's the only way for this airplane to not fall apart. Yes, lots of forces, especially with planes this heavy, you know, with all the fuel in the wing, act upon the wing and um, they need to be secure. Anyway, you can maybe see that this is almost like a biplane here because I had to keep one little part of the wing beneath. Why? Because on pretty much all airplanes that are low wing, the landing gear is stored in that low wing indeed. In fact, there's not really a way for this pretty narrow airplane, which is kind of shaped like a pencil, to properly put landing gear. So we need to put them in the wing and we need to put them in... This is absolutely stupid. But hey, a look into the cabin tells you all you need to know. I mean, look out side, we now have a wonderful view of what is surrounding us wherever we are in the cabin. And I mean, check this out here. All the engine fans will like this one. You not only see very much far below, but we can also take a look directly in the engine. Now, there's one issue there, that's the noise level. Yeah, this is, it quickly turns out this is very stupid. Also, yeah, with the landing gear housing here, um, you don't really see much uh, other than the engine. Now, what we also don't see is how our cabin space will definitely be restricted because of our wings here. There need to be fuel lines because fuel is once again stored in the wings, of course. So that would need to get smaller. In real life, there would be like a huge bump here. We would definitely um, have a smaller cabin. Yeah, at least where the wing is. Uh, so this is absolutely stupid. I've already said that. Now, aside from that, we're not even really using the advantages of having, having a wing this high. By the way, these engines look extremely high indeed. And instead, the landing gear can be a lot lower. It could, but um, we're not doing that because it looks funnier. And that would mean we could board the airplane from the ground without having to use stairs or jetways. You know, this is great for smaller airports. But the problem is, while well, small airplanes like the Q400 fly to smaller airports, 757 mostly doesn't, so you need jet ways anyway. This is absolutely stupid. I mean, another reason why lots of military cargo airplanes like the C-17 or even the C-5 Galaxy have high wing is because, of course, with a lower ground clearance, you can more easily load cargo in. Uh, anyway, let's go ahead and turn on this airplane and try to fly it, which, to be honest, I'm not too sure about. Anyway, engines are turning on, as you can see. Yes. See, the thing is, also, most high wing airplanes have a T-tail design, which is also a bit of an advantage because it's it tends to be heavier of a design because you need to structurally also strengthen that tail, which makes it heavier. So th this th this design is just full of problems for a plane like this without a proper advantage. And I'm honestly not sure if this is going to fly in this configuration. Like this wing there with this wing there. I don't even know if that makes sense. Good. Either way, we are now on the ground here of La Mole Airport, and I'm really interested in this flight. Let's go full power. Of course, the physics are all simulated. This plane looks weird now, doesn't it? It looks really weird. I don't know why it's so high up, to be honest. Let's go release the brakes full power. I mean, the 757 is a very sporty airplane. Let's set the flaps down, which works wonderfully here. A little bit of wing flex here, a little bit of shaking. This plane looks absolutely hideous and ugly. But hey, look at that. It flies now, and it flies really well. Jeez, look at that. Yes, there we go. And well, would you look at this wonderful view outside? We do see quite a lot. Look at this. This is amazing. Yes, we see the big engine. Now, sound level in the cabin is maybe a little bit more. And that's quite a lot worse. Cause they, oh, okay. All right. Testing the performance. Can we make it? 
Let's take a look. No, that was... Oh, that crashed the flight sim. Now, let's go ahead and get to the real advantages of having a high wing design. And that is that you can be really rough with the airplane. See, because the wing is so high up and the engine is so high up, you can be really rough there because you will never worry about engine striking or wing striking. The only thing that could fail is the landing gear, which tends to happen oddly often in a high wing airplane. Either way, we can be rough. We can land this plane on any runway. Now, it could also be a reason why we don't see lots of high-wing airliners, because that's not really a needed skill, to be honest. Like, it's it's clear that most airports have runways that are actually long enough to host planes, and also are paved, so you don't need engines that are protected from sucking in things. Let's go ahead and uh, reverse thrust here. Now, stop. Mainly. Look at that, and that works! For some reason, uh, reverse thrust animation doesn't work, but it works! Look at that, and this plane looks horrible, but this is perfect. Yes, land wherever we want to. Yes, just like the C-17, we can even operate on grass strips. Because we can't suck in anything! Look how high these engines are! Uh, let's see if we can take off at all here from, from this place. It might not work, though. Full power, though? Yeah, see this, the strength and power of the 757. It is a very sporty airplane. Uh, let's do it. Brakes release, and let's put the flaps fully down now. Let's really extend them and see how much runway we really need for these, for this. C come on. Yes, look at that. Well, okay, we're overrunning. The length of the runway is a bit of an issue, but what isn't an issue is the fact that it's a grass runway. Uh, yeah, there you go. We've... We've done it. So that, I guess, makes maintenance a lot better because you don't need to maintain the engines that often. Oh. What the hell? You don't need to maintain the engines that often. That is a weird bug. Although I do kind of see a maintenance issue here. And that is definitely because of the engines being this high, you would need big ladders to um, put maintenance workers up there. That's actually a genuinely big problem about a high-wing airplane. They're a lot harder to maintain. So that, I guess, is a bit of a setback, to be honest. Let's see if we can take off from here. Oh, it's laggy now. And God, this plane is actually, like, genuinely ugly. I'm glad that Boeing has never thought of making it. Let's see. Uh, takeoff should work. And in slow motion, we see that it does. Look at that. Uh, yeah. Perfect. That's worked very well. But here is one more big safety aspect that I was thinking of here. And that's where a high-wing airplane always struggles. And that is in certain types of emergency situations, like, for example, a belly landing. Yes, imagine the situation, your uh, engines fail because you cut them off. And so you land in the water. Now, usually on airliners, the plane floats quite well because it sits on the wings. Here, this is not the case. Here, it sits on the fuselage. So uh, in terms of emergency situation, we're kind of cooked. At least the rammer turbine here works so we can fly. Come on, come on, look at that. Let's go ahead and land this. Uh oh. That was a crash. Oh, boom. There you go. That's not gone very well. There you go. That's not gone very well. But as you can see, we easily submerge into the water. This wing isn't helping us out at all. Also, I would imagine a landing gear failure is a little bit um, awkward. Now, that's what happens here. Oh, 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 we've fallen over. We've definitely fallen over. Yeah, this is another problem with high wing design. You do have a uh, plane really tips to the right, doesn't it? And it probably spins out of the runway, to be honest, as well. Probably wouldn't want to encounter that. Let's see if we can take off from this position anyway. You're a strong 757, very strong engine. And even here, the engines don't even hit the ground. This is all fine. Just a slight bit of smoke here. Come on, take off. Come on, oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Got 150 knots on the clock. You can lift off in a jiff. Look at this. Now, at this point, we probably have uh, half of our wings scraped off. But look at this, we're able to take off. Yes, we <laughs> we are. Wonderful. Yeah, but landing is probably not very easy. Let's try doing that. But yeah, still the left landing gear is broken. So let's have a look at this. Okay, let's put her down smoothly. Put her down smoothly. Very smoothly. Yeah. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Okay, that's not really worked out at all, has it? And so now the airplane spins out of control and we all die. Womp, womp, womp. Very good. So yes, high-wing airplanes do make sense for certain use cases, like cargo or short-haul flying, but not for airliners. Aside from the fact it's absolutely ugly and hideous. That's probably the worst concept we've ever had on the channel. So thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters. <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.